In the last 3.5 years in MBBS, I have studied for countless hours with study sessions ranging from 30 minutes to over 18 hours during exam weeks. I've also burnt out quite a lot of times and felt the increasing inertia to pick up the book after I had closed it. But by researching and remodeling my method of study, I've come up with a perfect way to reduce burnout and also study for longer duration. If you didn't know me, hi, my name is Anush Pachel. I'm a final year MBBS student at GMC Nagpur and welcome to the channel. And in this video, I'll be going over exactly how you can do the same. Chapter 1. How to study for long hours The first point is measure how much you are actually studying in the first place. The simplest way to do that is whenever you are sitting down to study, set up this website called as bigtimer.net and set up a timer for let's say 2 hours and hit the space bar button and only and only then start studying. You will see the timer tick down to 0 and only if it has ticked down to 0 are you allowed to do something else. That might be watch a movie or take a small break of 15 or 20 minutes. What you should also do is that while you are getting distracted, let's say you are having thoughts of going to the park later in the evening or you know going to the gym later in the evening whenever you're having these thoughts just hit the space bar button and pause that timer so that you know that at this time i'm distracted and i'm not studying so the timer doesn't give you a false information and restart it once you're back in that concentration mode trust me this is the most effective tip that i can give you to increase the hours of time you're studying because you know exactly how much you're doing it and try to do at least two or three of these sessions every single day spaced out between different intervals so that you don't burn out easily let's say if you want to study six hours a day instead of sitting just zero to six in one go, space it out like 2 hours of studying, 4 hours of chill, 2 hours of studying, 4 hours of chill and again 2 hours of studying. This way you won't feel the burnout ever and you'll also get the same amount of work done but much more efficiently. This brings me to my second point, the law of diminishing returns. Now what the law of diminishing returns states is that the longer you keep doing the same activity, if it's not repetitive such as reading a new book where each new chapter is a different set of things, your productivity decreases after a certain amount of time. That means in the first hour you might be reading 50 pages but in the fifth or sixth star you might be reading only 10 pages now that's law of diminishing returns which will give you returns which are less when the same amount of work has been put in please make sure that you know this so what is the maximum duration that you should actually study well the answer according to research is max to max of two to four hours it depends upon different websites but yeah that seems to be the sweet spot for most of us because our brain cannot focus for more than that so what do we do we split our time into different zones so first we sit down for two to three hours then we take a break and then we again sit down for two to three hours and this is exactly the principle of the Pomodoro method. Next point, just wake up and start doing it without wasting your time into anything. So if you're studying for an exam, your schedule should look like this. Right after you wake up, you just pick up your textbook and sit down on your desk. Not worrying about, I need to have breakfast first and then I will sit and study or I need to work out first and then I'll study. Just wake up and start doing it because you will notice as soon as you wake up, your mind is so fresh and so clear that you're going to get the work done faster and you're going to have the willpower to sit for a longer period of time. The next is the most practical thing is minimize distraction. I've already made a video on that but in short whatever is distracting you it might be this phone so just take this phone and keep it in a different room detach yourself physically from the objects which are distracting you but you might say that hey Anuja I use my phone for the studies all the time how will I get rid of my phone well the simple answer is you can use apps like Zen mode or you can use focus mode whenever you're on the phone you're you're not bombarded with notifications which you know lead, lead to wasting of time try to do at least four to five Zen mode sessions every single day where you just turn off your phone for one hour be it in focus or Zen or just switch off completely and at that time just focus 100% on your studies which brings me to my next point that is the focus hours I've talked about this a lot on my channel but again I'm telling you because this is one of the most important things which I do in a daily life focus hours is those hours in which I had set my mind to one thing and one thing only and my goal is to complete that objective in the set amount of time that may be reading let's say appendix from surgeries in two hours or watching seven marrow videos every single day in these focus hours my mind thinks of nothing else but the goal at hand and only and only if that goal is achieved am I able to move on to something else. The next point is setting up a beautiful schedule for your studies. Only and only if you know what you have to do during the day will you actually do it. So usually I have got the entire week already planned in which I know ki in this day I have to study these these topics from marrow or from books or from clinics or hospitals. Right after I wake up I know what I have to do so I just get on to it. The next point is flipping around between active and passive studying. Passive studying can be defined as just picking up a textbook and reading it whereas active studying can be defined as solving the question banks on different apps. So let's say you have a schedule for four hours in that three hours you study the textbook and one hour without fail give it to solving the questions and solving the cue banks or giving a test or reviewing it. Whatever it is just make sure that you are practicing something active in your long duration of study hours. 
what i generally do is that after the clinics and the hospital i come back home study a little bit and in the end of the day i go ahead and solve the question bank for whatever i've seen in the morning or i've studied in the afternoon this way i'm able to keep my knowledge updated as well as practice active recall which will help me build up long term retention last but not the least have a very positive mindset about the subject because if you are approaching it in a negative way you will never ever be able to sit for long hours to study it you will only ever feel like i just want to get off the subject because i don't like it i did not like biostats but when the examinations came I convinced myself that it is one of the best things out there and only and only if I convinced myself that was I able to study it for a long period of time because otherwise I would not even have picked up the book to study it the same way if you don't like a subject that might be maths that might be science hindi sst whatever you're reading just have a positive mindset towards it from the start and you will see a lot of different changes happening in your life in fact this generally does not even apply to subject it applies to life as well whatever you're do- doing have a positive mindset from the start and it will work out in the end chapter 2 how to prevent burnout or how to get rid of burnout if you are facing it the first thing is recognizing the signs and symptoms of burnout and getting to know that you are actually suffering from this so what are these symptoms or signs if you ask me first of all you will have decreased concentration towards anything that you are doing that might be swimming driving studying reading solving question banks all of that you will also feel a sense of constant mental and physical exhaustion let's say if i tell you to study physics you will feel ki mujhe nahi karna i am done with it i don't want to do it. if you are not burnt out you will be in a positive mindset saying ki okay i'll do physics for one hour you will also feel the sense of zero motivation for whatever you want to do in life and feel a lot bored whenever you're doing that subject so if you're suffering from these uh, signs and symptoms it's kind of easy to diagnose you as being burnt out with whatever you're doing especially if you like the subject early on the most important thing that you can do over here is take time off because you might have worked yourself you might have overworked yourself and the only way you can prevent it is just by stopping the work for a few days enjoying yourself and getting back into your grind i suffered from burnout last year where i was just constantly focusing on making youtube videos such as this one as well as studying for my exams continuously which happens every single month and this this caused me to burn out so much that I wasn't even enjoying the process of studying or making videos. So guess what I did? I went on a trip to Mumbai and I just released all the pressure, felt fresh after it and came back with double effort in both studies as well as making videos. And as you can see, the performance of the channel has increased as well as the amount of time I'm putting in my studies have increased. However, it does not have to be as extravagant as going on a trip to Mumbai and taking some breaks. It can also be as small as just taking a walk or taking a few days off. just st- staying at home enjoying your favorite show binge watching something or just trying out something new maybe try out cooking maybe try out driving something which you did not do before that will spark a lot of interest in your mind to get back to the things which you already love the next point is ergonomics so ergonomics is the way a man interacts with their environment and the environment interacts with the man it basically applies to how your room looks like where you sitting is it comfortable do you actually want to be there when you are studying all of that so have a good table have a good chair if you don't have that join a live Join to go to your college library. They usually have fantastic tables and chairs. They're also air conditioned sometimes, so it might be ergonomic for you. If you feel like the light source is different, then get a new light source or move your table around so that it fits the perfect light source. All of these things are so tiny that our brain does not pay attention to it, but actually they are really, really important. Take care of the ergonomics. Design your setup in this way that you will actually love sitting there and working. A lot of the people find this next point pretty relatable: is sharing your journey with the world. I see a lot of study streamers on YouTube, but the same way, if you're feeling lonely you can join the study sessions from different streamers all across the world so that you can share your journey with them if that's not possible study with a friend with a few guys set up an objective that you have to study for 4 hours and only and only then we'll go out of the library and go and get some chai personally this is really really great to prevent burnout because whenever you are with a friend it just feels good to be studying and discussing because you know that you are not alone in this journey there's someone with you who is actually traveling the same path the last tip i could give you is subscribing to my channel would keep you motivated keep you more productive and give you videos such as this one and also subscribing is absolutely free of cost and you can always unsubscribe later well that was it for this video smash the like button if you liked it and if you want to watch me react to some medical memes here you go right it's your manager i'll catch you in the next one goodbye